We've got uh, a very quick PowerPoint presentation now on ultrasound. Um, really, really simple, won't take long to understand. So, first of all, let's ask ourselves a question. How is sound made? Well, it's made by vibrations, and you've seen this sort of thing. You've all seen a, a speaker vibrating or a guitar string or something like that. If you were to put, say, some dry sand on your speaker and play some music through that speaker, you'd see that sand dancing as the, as the speaker kind of vibrated. Um, sometimes that vibration is not so easy to see. Something like if you have a wind instrument or a brass instrument, say something like a trumpet, well, what's vibrating in there? There's nothing to vibrate. Well, it's the actual air column. The column of air inside the trumpet is vibrating. And when you make that column of air shorter by pulling the trombone in or, the, or, or pushing the button with the trumpet, by making the air column shorter, you're actually increasing the pitch. So making sound is all about vibrations. Um, these vibrations move through the air at uh, normally at about 330 meters per second. That's the speed of sound through air, depending on various factors. Um, and eventually they'll reach your ear and they'll bang into your eardrum and your, your eardrum will vibrate and your brain will interpret that as sounds. So that's it. That's how sounds are made and, and are transferred to your, your head, your ear. Um, now there are two types of wave. There's there's one called a transverse wave. That's the second one on this diagram. It's got these up and down bits. Um, so water wave is a transverse wave. It's got a trough at the bottom, a crest at the top. And you can see one wavelength is one point in a wave to the same point in the next wave. And it doesn't matter which point you choose. You can take the crest or the trough or, or as it comes down just after the crest. It doesn't matter. And that's called the wavelength half of the height of the wave is called the amplitude and it's important that you can um, label this so get this down in your books get this down in your notes the other type of wave is a longitudinal wave and, and it's kind of like a squash wave if you imagine um, I had a slinky stretched out a long spring stretched out the transverse wave I could make by shaking it from side to side and if I wanted to make a, a longitudinal wave I'd have to push uh, push forwards on the spring and that would set up this little squash or compression and that compression would move along and it has all the same properties as a transverse wave it will bounce off and come back so those are the two kinds of waves transverse waves like water and longitudinal waves sound is a longitudinal wave an area of, of squashed air moves through the room from my voice box to your ear um, and what's causing that is the vibrations in my voice box. So you need to know those two kinds of waves. Now, <clears throat> the number of waves per second, how many waves are being created per second, is called the frequency and is measured in hertz. So for example, if 50 waves pass a point in one second, then that's 50 hertz. If 10 waves passed in a second, it's 10 hertz. So that's frequency. The higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. More waves per second means higher pitch. Now, let's get to the sort of the point of this presentation, which is ultrasound. There are sounds that you cannot hear, a human being cannot hear, because it's outside the audible frequency, the audible range of frequency. For humans, that's about 20 to 20,000 hertz. Now, think about it, that's 20,000 waves per second. Course, sounds like a really really high frequency anything beyond that and uh, and we can't hear it now it does depend on age so what you've got this picture here is these these uh, teenagers with their hands in their ears this is a thing called the mosquito um, the idea was that people put it outside shops and it emits a very very high frequency sound like around 20,000 Hertz and young people can hear it and old people can't so uh, I think it's supposed to deter young people from uh, standing outside shops in groups. <laughs> uh, but apparently the older people can't hear it. I'm not sure how well that works, to be honest, but um, that's the idea behind that. Um, bats. Bats can emit a frequency of 100,000 hertz. So five times the upper limit for a human being. So they're really chucking out some very high frequency sounds. They could be making a real racket and you couldn't even hear it because your ears can't hear that, uh, that high frequency. It's not that there isn't a noise. There is a very loud noise there, but you just cannot hear it. And bats use that 
for echolocation. They can use it to build a picture of their environment up um, uh, uh, and use it for hunting and things like that. Uh, the military use this as well in uh, echolocation. This is um, when uh, uh, warships used to try and locate submarines, U-boats, and they'd use echolocation for that. They'd send a ping of noise down, and when it returned quickly, that means there was something fairly uh, fairly close underneath you, and they'd drop a depth charger bomb into the ocean, and uh, that was one method that um, was used to, to hunt the U-boats. Let's move on. Let's move on to some uses of ultrasound. First one, looking inside a person without the need for surgery. So no need to cut into people to look inside them. You can just use ultrasound. You bounce the sound off of the internal organs, or, or in this case, a little baby there. Um, that first picture, the one on the left, that's a, a 2D ultrasound picture of a baby. And you can just about see its backbone, its vertebrae, the, the, the white bits of the hard bone. Then in the middle, we've got this really impressive 3D ultrasound picture of a baby. And the one on the right is a picture of, um, of a tumour. So you can look inside someone without actually having to take a knife to them, which is useful. Um, it's also used in breaking up kidney stones. You put very powerful uh, ultrasound frequency in to these, uh, to these kidney stones, uh, and they crush the stones. They break them up in very, very smaller bits, which can be then passed out of the body. And that means you don't have to go in again with a knife and cut the kidney open and, and uh, break this thing up that way. So there we go, um, nice and quick, not too much to digest there. Have a look at the questions, um, see if you can get four marks, pause the video here, and then um, have a look at the answers and see how you did. Good luck.